My guest today is Peter Ladati. Peter, how are you? Hey, pretty good. Great to see you, Dave. Great to see you. I already know the answer to this question, but what do you do for a living? I uh, work at Microsoft. It's a small you company. You might have might have heard of them. Uh, and you uh, actually, I'll, I'll answer it. You're a cloud solution architect. You're on my team. We're we're we're, we're peers. Yeah. So this is like a little insider baseball episode, I guess, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, and um, and we one of the things we've worked together on is something called What the Hack. And mm -hmm. that's kind of your your baby. I, uh, where did the come from? Did you did you create What the Hack? Or um, did you inherit it or what? Uh, I will say I'm a co-creator. Okay. So it was myself and a good friend of mine. His name is Gino Filicetti. Um, he was also here at Microsoft. He was a cloud architect like me. Um, we were in different parts of the company, but we had a, cu a customer that we shared together. Cool. And By the way, Gino Filicetti, I've never met him. That's my favorite new name. All right. There you go. <laughs> um, so Gino and I had this common customer. And one of the things we do as architects, as our day jobs with our customers, is usually that you know they want to learn the technology, they want to get used to how things work in the cloud, and and you know we're, we're focused on Azure and teaching them stuff about that. So we usually will run like workshops to train them, right. and you know we'll we'll just make these workshops up as like a custom thing. You talk to like one of the stakeholders of the customer, and they'll say, "Hey, I've got a, you know a team of fifteen people, and they want to learn about Azure web apps. Like, how do we do that? How's that work? And uh, you know, let, let's sit down and." plan you know like one or two days maybe three days we'll come over we'll visit you on site and we'll, we'll take your, your team through it we'll work you through the workshop and and we just make these things up uh, a lot you know sometimes they're you know we just write some things on the whiteboard there's no formal agenda and it, it's just let's go see what we can do maybe it's a proof of concept and in the case of this one customer we had um they they were new to azure and they really wanted to understand like how to automate things like infrastructure as code, which at the time was our ARM templates in Azure. And so Gene and I put together this workshop that we sat down with, um, with the customer. And we went down for three days to where the customer was located down in Texas, which was a good time in Austin. And um, they really enjoyed it. And the whole premise was that we don't have time to write a lab. Like, you know, like a, a normal lab would be a step-by-step -step lab. You know, maybe there's 20 pages with 100 steps saying, click it does, here. I've do done it. that. It, does, it is really time-consuming. Yeah, you know, it, it's time-consuming to author, right? Like, click here, run this command, do what this screenshot says. And you got to keep it up to date because the screenshots always change as they change the UIs and all the products. But, um, you know, you, you really have to put time to that. This was... Now let's not tell them how to do things. Let's just tell them what we want them to do. We got a couple of experts in the room, myself and Gino, and go do it. And that's yeah. really easy because I could just make a, a list of 10 things and say, here, go do these things mm -hmm. and not tell them how to do it. And then you know, let them go figure it out and we're here to answer questions as they get stuck. And so that was like sort of the premise. Throwing them in the deep end of the pool to teach them how to swim. Pretty much, yeah. We, you know, we, we did a couple of lectures um, you know, to set context, introduce some major technology, uh, you know, context of what they were going to do. But that was it. You know, we let them have fun with it for three days and it was no sweat off our back. It didn't take a lot of work for us to put together. Mm -hmm. And um, we got a lot of good feedback and we ended up using this for a couple of other customers, this, this format at the time. And then um, it, it grew from there. So uh, I don't know, should I, well, yeah, I, well, let's go right into how it grew from there. So where where the, where'd the name yeah. come from? Because this this yeah, took time. So this was hack. Yeah, it was. It didn't have the name at first. So it was April 2017 when we did that first workshop with a customer, and kind of you know put the format together. And later that summer in July is usually when the fiscal year turns over at Microsoft, yeah. and we we usually have a big annual conference out in Las Vegas where we bring everyone to learn and, and hear all the keynotes from all of the executives and stuff like that. And we they did a new version of this, you know, bring everyone out to Vegas, you know, 15,000 people, let's go have a conference. And it was really focused on the sales folks in the organization. There was not a lot of technical content. Mm. So the summer of 2017 was the second year of one of these conferences we were running. And um, they came to us and they said, hey, we want to put on 
some tech content for folks. Can we run a hackathon oh, um, on you, one of the evenings? you raised your hand and said, I've got some content. Yes, I, exactly. Gina and I both raised our hands because coincidentally, it was our two managers who got together and were the folks in charge of putting a tech track together for this conference in Vegas. You know, one of those guys is Tony Surma, who is our, it just got he's our current, yeah, he's our chief architect now um, in, in uh, the partner work here at Microsoft. So Tony and, and Gino's guy at the time, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head, um, they own this tech track and they said, hey, can two of you figure something out? We want to put together a hack for about 500 people, 500 of your peers hmm. out in Las Vegas. And uh, this was like first week of July. And I think the conference was like early August or something like that. Oh, and we're like, no oh, pressure. Wow. that's a short time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we, we put together, we, we quickly coalesced that we wanted to have four different topics, four different hacks that run in parallel. So we recruited about two or three people for each hack um, to put the content together. Mm-hmm. They said, look, you got three weeks, put something together. And this format works because you don't have to go write a ton of documentation on how to do it. You're just putting together a task list that you want people to go through for the hack. Right. So we ran that event and we ended up having about uh, 300 people show up to the actual hack. Because it's voluntary at this big conference in Vegas. Right. And a week before the event, they're like, we're not going to run the hack on the second night of the three-day conference. We're going to run it at 7.30 in the morning on a Friday, the last day of the conference when everyone's leaving after like lunchtime to head home. That's where, in other words, we got the worst time slot possible because they couldn't figure out the logistics of getting the conference room. And yet 300 people still showed up and stuck through that hack until about one, two in the afternoon. So yeah, we had a great time. And coming out of that, we, we needed a place to host the content. So a GitHub repo was born and the name What The Hack was born too. And that I have to give credit to Tony Surma, who I just named, who's our new architect. He came up with the name randomly, and it's kind of stuck ever since then. Very cool. And it's still going on. That's six years later, and uh, you're still doing it. It's not just the two or three that you did for this. Now there's dozens of them, right? Yeah, and uh, it started out with like, here's a repo. Let's let's build some more because there it's a cool format. And yeah, now we're up. Uh, there's right now as of today, there's sixty. 60 hacks that are published wow. in the catalog, but uh, we've we've got a lot in the pipeline, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get up to 65, closer to 70 within the next couple of months. People like to publish these things at the end of the, the year, mm-hmm. like in the summer when, when time is slow usually, so we'll probably get a bunch more content coming in pretty soon. Uh, tell me about the process of when it's going on. Uh, people used to tell them that it's, it's kind of uh, declarative rather than imperative. It's not step by step, it's just here's the end result, go and do this. But people will get stuck if you tell them that and they don't really have the knowledge. What do they do when they get stuck? Uh, well, we don't let them spin their wheels. Well, we do. We let them spin their wheels on purpose for a little bit. Um, so one aspect I left out of the format is, you know, besides the we tell them what to do, not how, is that there's this concept of a coach. So the people delivering the hack, which would be usually the subject matter experts would be myself or whoever authored the hack, um, they will uh, be a coach. And we typically split the attendees into small little groups of three to five people to work together. And it's a team-based exercise. We want the folks to collaborate with each other. And what we find is that usually when you put three to five people together, it's rare that they will all be stuck spinning their wheels. Mm -hmm. Someone in the group of five will have a light bulb come on and help lead the others along. And that will go back and forth. Like if everyone's collaborating, um, you know, you might have someone who's had some experience with the technology so they can help lead the others to it and uh, bring them along. But the coach is engaged with each group. So with each team of three to five, you have a coach um, who's there listening in, sort of participating and acting as a tech advisor. And when the students would ask a question, you don't give them the answer. You usually answer with another question that kind of is a leading question that might point them in the right direction so they don't get stuck. And that's sort of how the format goes. So there's a little bit of back and forth, good relationship between the students and the coach. Okay. So the this idea is that step by step it works, but maybe they won't retain it as well. If you force them to think about it, force them to come up with the answer on their own, then maybe they'll retain it a little better. Um, tell me about the how it's evolved in that time. Is the How different does do these what the hacks look today other than that there are more of them? than it did six years ago. 
there's there's more to it. There's more consistency. So when we first did it, it was like that rushed event, three weeks. We had like, like I said, about two or three people per hack, so four. So maybe there's like 10, 10 people or so that were working on those. And they just put their content together, threw it in the repo, and slammed it out there. And that was that. Uh, there was no consistency. So as new hacks started coming in, they would look very different than each other. And they, they'd still be great content, but some of them were PDF files with the steps. Others were Word docs with the steps. Some folks were doing it in Markdown in, in GitHub, which is the, the language for formatting, uh, for publishing content on GitHub. And so what we did after the first year is we said, hey, let's, let's get a little bit more consistent and put a little bit more guardrails on how the content should be developed. Okay. Because it really was anything goes. Um, anyone could contribute content. It didn't really matter what it looked like. So we found that when other folks would use the content, that was their complaint. There wasn't consistency in the quality. And so we made an effort to really um, refine the format, define that. And we authored an author's guide on how to author one, like what are all the core things that makes a good hack versus a not so good hack. And then we also put together a hosting guide on how you run an event, like how do you handle all the logistics of running the event wow. and uh, do things like that. And that definitely helped. That took us forward probably for the first two or three years, um, you know, and, and probably got us up to 20 hacks, I think, within the first three years. Nice. Uh, you have kind of a what the heck in a box. Yeah, it, it, it sort of was like that. Um, but it was very ad hoc, you know, because it was myself and Gino doing it as our side gig. It's not our main our main thing. Like we were just help coach some of the other authors along as they go. And then uh, at, at some point, Gino left the company. He's moved on. He's at another uh, large company that we all probably know. And uh, he's actually trying to replicate it over there at his company and bring the same process over there. But when, when Gino left, I realized I can't be the bottleneck. I've got this great body of content and people are submitting pull requests. They're submitting new content and I couldn't keep up with it. So I put together a V team, virtual team. It's like a acronym we'll use at Microsoft. You know, when you get a group of folks together that don't report to anyone. So it's a, everyone's a volunteer. That's right. what the V and V team stands for. Oh, I thought it was virtual. <laughs> yeah, you would think so, but it's it's a volunteer team. Okay. Um, we've, we've had between five and six people, you know, on it the past couple of years. And collectively, um, now we all curate the content uh, for it. And, and we've, we've done a lot as a V team technically to make it easier for authors. So uh, all that stuff we'd written in the author's guide, every time we do a content review, we'd say, hey, you didn't read the author's guide. Why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? And so it got to the point where some of these things were so repetitive that we created templates. Oh. And we actually, uh, one of the folks on the V team, his name is Jordan Bean, he put together a GitHub action so that if someone wants to author new content, they say, hey, create new hack. Tell me the name of your hack, how many um, challenges. So the exercises you do in these workshops, we call them challenges. Mm -hmm. How many challenges you want. And it will go stub out a bunch of markdown files oh, in a template. Cool. It'll, it'll scaffold it out for you in your repo. Because the way it works is you fork our repo, you do your, your authoring, and then you submit a pull request back to the main what the hack uh, repo where we store the content. And so now that gets stubbed out. And pretty much in line in the template are the do's and don'ts from the author's guide which makes it really easy for an author to just go in and start writing the content quick and publish these things. Awesome. Who is delivering this uh, and, and who are the audience? Great question. You know, like I said, the, the way it first got started was we were delivering it to a customer that we had. And really quickly, that internal event I talked about in Las Vegas, that was internal. We were training our peers who were other cloud architects or folks in different tech roles here at Microsoft. And so it went the same way. It was a mix of us delivering these to customers and internally. We would run these as internal events um, to cross-train our peers, especially as like new topics come out. There's always, you know, whatever the hot new technology is. Um, pretty quickly after what the hack around the same time has been the rise of Kubernetes and the Azure Kubernetes service. And Kubernetes has a pretty long learning curve. I won't say it's steep, but it's a long learning curve, meaning I'm still on it somewhere. No matter how much you learn in Kubernetes, there's always more to know. Yeah. And uh, the, the hack we have for Kubernetes to this day, six years later, is the most popular hack that folks 
continually request from our customers and even internally at Microsoft because people still need to learn this. It's pretty fundamental technology for running uh, applications in the cloud. So yeah, mostly, uh, well, not mostly, a mix, a mix of external customers and internal um, training at Microsoft where this has been used. Okay. It, it can um, people outside of Microsoft deliver the content? They can. They can. Everything that we've published is open source. So we do have the hosting guide. So if someone wants to take the content and run it outside of Microsoft, they can. Um, there's good things and bad things about that. The good thing is that you can do it. The bad thing is I might not know about it. So I, I can't stand here and tell you like, oh, we've got so many people who've used it externally um, because it's all through the love of community, right? If yeah. folks don't report back or tell us that they're using it, we don't know. Um, and we do, there's a lot of word of mouth internally, folks who will tell us internally that they're using it. But, you know, sometimes we don't always know where it's being used and we get surprised. You know, we'll get, you know, emails from random folks saying, hey, I want to run this event. I, I found your content. And, and then we'll sit down with them and we'll make sure they actually have what they need to know to host an event themselves. That's probably the but, best thing is to reach out to you for a little support or, or your V team uh, for, uh, to put on a good event. It, yeah, we do. We have an alias on the repo that basically says if you want to host and you have any questions, reach out to the V team and one of us will usually get back to you. Um, we can't provide resources. You know, we can't say, oh, I'm going to bring, you know, two or three Microsoft folks to your company and do it. But we'll either coach you on how to do it yourself or we'll say connect with your Microsoft account team. Like if you have Microsoft representatives, they might be able to do it for you too. And then we'll connect the dots behind the scenes. Um, also, we'll connect the dots with the author. So if someone wants to, you know, do a hack on topic X, we'll go find who the author is for that hack and connect them. So they can at least walk you through the content and give you a little bit more understanding of it so you can dive into it. Okay. So it's all out on GitHub and it sounds like it's open source. But anybody can use the content. Are people contributing back to it other than your V team? Uh, other than the V team? Yeah, absolutely. I would say the majority of the content comes from other folks here internally at Microsoft, okay. but we do get contributions from outside Microsoft. They are few and far between, but we're working on improving that. Uh, you know, one thing you and I, we're on a team that works for Microsoft partners. So our customers are partners at Microsoft. And a lot of these partners have solutions that run in the cloud in Azure, and they co-market those with us because they've done work to make their solution work natively inside of Azure. And we're working with those partners to bring hack or develop and author hackathons on their solutions running in Azure so we can do that. And so we've had a couple so far um, where those contributions have come in from the partner where they co-authored a hack with, let's say, one of the folks at Microsoft to publish mm -hmm. it up there. Interesting. Um, and there's, uh, tell me about, you mentioned Kubernetes is really popular right now. What are some of the other really popular ones? Um, one topic that's pretty popular is um, Synapse. We've had like five different hacks submitted over time. And I know uh, the folks who are big on Synapse and data and things like that, um, they've run those hacks and had pretty good turnout for those. Those are pretty popular. Um, we have a bunch of hacks over time on infrastructure as code and DevOps. And so I think that that's a category. So there's a hack, uh, we used to have a hack on ARM templates, which was the original one Gino and I did for that customer way back in 2017. We've made parallel versions of that for Bicep, uh, Terraform and Ansible. So those have been used and those are really good fundamental hacks if you just wanna get started with Azure and understand because not only are you learning how to do infrastructure as code with let's say the Bicep code and stuff, you're kind of learning fundamentally how to navigate the portal, you know, how to create resources, how things are structured inside Azure. Mm -hmm. So it covers a lot of that. And then DevOps, there's uh, Azure DevOps, and then we also have GitHub, um, which is owned by Microsoft. So there's there's how you can set up a DevOps process with GitHub. So we've got a couple of hacks on those that are popular. And there's two hacks we have coming really soon that I anticipate are probably going to be just as pop, probably be our most popular hacks when they come. Um, what's what's the topic we're all talking about these days? AI. Yes. Good guess, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we've got two hacks in the pipeline. Uh, I'm hoping that we'll get them out by the end of July, maybe into August. So maybe by the time you hear this, they might be published. 
Um, but I am anticipating those hacks are going to get a lot of attention because that's the hotness in tech right now. It's the shiny new toy. I want to see it as well. Um, where can people go to learn more about this? Um, great thing. So mention that we have a GitHub repo. GitHub is where we host all the content, but we actually don't want you to visit the GitHub repo. Okay, forget he said that. <laughs> we, we want to hide it, but no, 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 no. So we have a website. And so the website is derived from GitHub. So it uses GitHub pages and the website is built from the content on GitHub. And so it's at the Microsoft link shortener that we've got. So the URL is aka.ms slash WTH for what the heck. Well, that's easy to remember. Um, very easy to remember. And in fact, the full URL, I can't even remember. It's GitHub pages dot something or other. Um, but the reason you might ask why, why do I want to point you at the website and not the repo? Um, maybe because it has some cheat codes in the repo. Something like that. Um, so for our authors, um, when they author content, not only do they produce the student guide, which tells the students, hey, here's all the things that you need to do, the what, there is usually, or we now require it, a corresponding coach's guide, which has all the how, or maybe not all the, the how. That's the cheat codes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the teacher's manual. Right. And you know, earlier we talked about like, hey, I could write that 20 page document with a hundred steps of how you do this with all the screenshots and commands. We don't ask the authors to do that because that would be a lot of work. You'd have to maintain that, update that over time. But we say, hey, think of it this way. If someone else wants to pick this content up off the shelf and use it and deliver it to someone, what do they need to know? Like what are the common blockers that students are gonna come across? Hmm. You know, all the things as a, as a coach you'd wanna know like, hey, you're gonna run this hack on Cosmos DB. And by the way, Cosmos can be expensive if your students leave it running after the lab is over. So, Good you know, turn it off, turn it off. Like, so there's common things that people get stuck on and we'll tell the coaches or the authors, put that in the coach guide. So yeah. you don't have to give the step by step. Now, some of our authors do, they write a really lengthy coach guide, but my thing is write the coach guide as, Hey, I'm coming along. I've got a, you know, a customer or some organization that wants this content and I've got three days to pick it up and learn it. How can I skim your coach guide? and be able to stay two steps ahead of the students when I deliver it. You know, if I understand the format, we're all good. And so, because it's open source, it's all out there, students can find the coach guide, um, but we don't want them to. So we advertise our website, which only has the student guides. And if you're gonna host an event, there are links to our host guide, which will lead you to the repo. And we know people can find the repo. And if they do, um, you know, we just say, hey, we're all adults here. Let's be honest. Let's. Don't cheat yourself out of an education. Yeah, and most folks, to learn. <laughs> yeah, they're, most people are cool with it. So it's security through obfuscation, pure obfuscation. Awesome. Well, Peter, this is really interesting. I've, I've helped out on a couple of your, or your What the Hacks in the past, and I really enjoyed it. And I, I think the students also enjoyed it. It's, it's really a good thing you're doing here. Uh, and Great, I appreciate yeah. the time you're spending with me today. Yeah, it was fun having you uh, along to help out. We did uh, a couple of the Kubernetes hacks with some of our joint customers together. Yep. All right. You have a great day. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>